On my E46, my instrument cluster reads negative 40 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, if you have this problem, your AC system may not function. Actually, it'll probably shut down, the snowflake button might flash, or you won't get any cooling. Now, this is from either a bad or damaged outside temperature sensor. It's actually quite common for the sensor to be damaged uh, from accidental uh, scraping, um, from hitting something in the front end. Usually the sensor is located on the left side. In some vehicles it's located on the right side. And it's usually right in like the bottom of the fender liner. There's like a plastic panel that should house this sensor. So you can see it reads negative 40. That usually means that my sensor is open. So it's probably missing. Let's take a look. Now in my left fender well, I'm missing the plastic panel that goes under here and up that attaches to the wheel liner. That's where the sensor should be. And if this is actually my two wires. This is for my outside temp sensor. So at some point this has been damaged and uh, pulled off when something happened where it destroyed that panel. Now you saw it read negative 40. <clears throat> I'm going to take some wire strippers. And just take a little bit of the sheathing off for both of these wires. Oh, that one doesn't have much left there. Take a little bit more. There we go. Snip that off. Okay. I'm going to take both these two ends and I'm going to touch them together. This is another common problem that you'll see. So with these two wires, say they got chafed and the wires touching together or when it got damaged the ends end up touching together. Alright my wires are now shorted together they're no longer open. Now that sensor is a direct input to your instrument cluster. Go ahead and cycle my key on. Well, it still reads negative 40. I'm actually a little bit surprised. Oh, there it goes. <laughs> it had to update. All right, that got me for a second there. So I went from super cold to super hot. Now, that sensor runs off of resistance, and now that I'm shorted together, my instrument cluster thinks it's uh, 121 degrees Fahrenheit. So I went from the North Pole to the Sahara Desert. Now, I'm going to actually do a repair. Whoa, that's kind of weird. Looks like I still have a contact problem. I wonder if I have a wiring issue further up as well, switching back and forth. I'm actually going to do a wire repair, and I'm going to go ahead and show you how to install a new sensor with wiring and a connector, because usually the connector is lost as well, and I'll give you part numbers and everything to get this repair done. I would recommend getting these parts from your BMW dealer or maybe online. Um, Pelican Parts is a good place. I'm not sure if they're going to have this type of wiring set up, but you could punch in the part numbers on realoem.com and see if uh, those part numbers are available on Pelican Parts. Let me go over the main components of this repair. That's going to be my wiring harness, my sensor, and my connector. Now, the temperature sensor, which is right here, this is going to be part number 65816905133. Let's see. My, I think they're going to call this a universal plug. And the part number for this plug, it's two pins, is 61138365343. Then I have my two wires with this uh, bushing on it right here that's going to prevent water from getting into my connector and the part number you'll need two of these part number for the wiring is 61 13 0 0 0 5 1 9 9 and that's going to encompass these three components right here now the items you need for this repair are some simple items I have some heat shrink, some wire cutters, wire pliers, some electrical tape, 
some solder. I like to use an electrical soldering gun. You can use a gas one if you like and a heat gun to heat my shrink tubing for a nice air watertight seal on my wiring when I'm done. Now you can use um, a lighter, if you don't have an actual heat gun, a lighter will work just as good. Just uh, You don't have to touch the flame to it, just use the heat. And usually this will uh, close up for you pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how to first set up the sensor, plug, and wiring. Now on this plug, it comes in the unlocked position. This is actually going to slide over to the locked position after I install my pins. You can see on this side I have two open holes. That's the side I'm going to slide the locking pin in. You have no access on this side. Now by the locking clip or pin on this, you see that little bump? That is the locking clip. When it slides in, it's going to lock into place. If you ever need to take these out, you just use a pick, unlock the connector, you press down on that tab and you can slide this pin right back out. So I'm going to go ahead and first install my two pins into this connector and then lock it by sliding this off to the side. Alright, so here's my connector. I have the open side facing me. There's my lock. I'm just going to slide it so that the lock is facing up. This should slide in relatively easy. There it is, whoops, locked up into place. Made a nice little click. Get my other pin. Again, the lock facing me. Just slide it in. If you just wiggle it around, you can actually get it to seat well. And then just get part of that sheathing in there. And you can see it just slides in, just using the wire. There's a little click. Now my pins are located. If I had to take these back out, this is how I would do it also. I'd unlock it, press down on that pin, and slowly finagle it back out. Now I have to lock this shut, so you just have to slide it. Okay, I have my connector built. Here's my sensor, and just locks into place. So that's basically what should be under the vehicle, and that's your outside temp sensor. Now I'm going to wire this up someplace where it's not going to drag. I'm um, not sure if I'm going to replace that panel or not, or just keep it in a different location. I'll have to check on the cost of that panel versus the other bigger repairs that I'm going to need to get done on my E46. Now I'm also going to, I'm going to leave all this wiring on for now, but you can trim this down to what size you need. So basically on the other end, you're going to use your wire strippers and just take a section off like that because we're going to twist these together with uh, the original harness. Just have to find the right size gauge to uh, strip the sheathing off. If you don't get it all in one, just go down to the next size and take it off on the next size down. Uh, you might wonder, um, I didn't really take note of what pins went where. Well, this is only, since it's only a resistance, reading it through the sensor, it doesn't matter on my polarity or if I have one wire going one way or the other. So you can wire this in whichever way you want. So you get two wires, just connect them together to the vehicle side harness and you'll be good to go. It makes it nice and simple. I've cut myself two small pieces of the sheathing and so I don't forget, I'm going to just slide that over the wiring now and leave them on there so that when I'm done my solder repair I can go ahead and use the heat gun to uh, close that up and keep it watertight. So you can just slide those on and leave them on and we'll deal with them in a little bit. Now I did find some more damage 
there's a spot here where the wires chewed up there's a spot really right here that's really bad and that's probably why my reading changed like it did so I'm going to go ahead and snip these back to where my wire is clean just take some of this off here so I'm just going to do a real simple repair okay take my sensor and I'm just gonna do a twist it's gonna give me a nice easy spot to do a solder It'll stick out to the side. Put my two wire ends together. Just twist them. Okay, now I got two spots that should be pretty easy to hit with a soldering gun. Well, soldering is actually pretty easy. I'm just going to let it heat up first. I can gently touch it to my wire. I made an angle here to make it easier to add the solder. Basically you want to add it to the wire but I like to just tap the end and that actually helps just draw it in a little bit. So you put a little bit on the end and then once it starts going you'll see it go right in. And Actually a little bit is all you need. There it is right there for one of them give that a yank it's good and solid that's not coming apart alright for my other one same thing make a little end heat my wire up and a little bit of solder is all you need you don't need a big large amount of solder just a tiny bit Okay, that's all I need. Now if it's your first time soldering, you can always practice on a couple of pieces of wire. You even have a bunch of wire right here where you can trim it. So from this point, all I'm going to do is fold my pointed end away from where my sheathing is. So it slides right over the top. Then I'm going to use my heat gun on my heat shrink. Make sure you get the ends good so it closes it up. A little bit larger gauge than I had wanted to use, but that's all I had available for the video. There we go. So that's good. It's a little warm, so I can actually kind of just squeeze it shut. Same thing on this side. Fold it away from myself so that uh, I can go ahead and slide my heat shrink right over the top.
seal that out. Pinch that closed. There we go. Now my wire repair is done. I am going to take some electrical tape and go ahead and just tape everything up. But that basically is your repair. You can make it into a loop, get a zip tie, tie it up someplace safe where it's not going to rub, even if you aren't going to put the panel back on. As long as it's up under the bumper, away from the tire, and away from it being damaged or falling down and dragging on the ground, you'll be good to go. So let's check to see what my temperature is now. Now if you had the key on while you were doing a repair like this, it might take some driving of the vehicle before the temperature is going to change. It wants to see road speed sometimes before the temperature will change. But if you let it sit and come back out in about a half hour, turn the key on, it should update. So let's see what it actually tells me. I didn't let it sit, I just did the repair now. Hopefully it will go ahead and register correctly. There we go, 52 degrees Fahrenheit. It's fixed. Here's my final repair. Just wrapped it up with some electrical tape just to protect it. And I'm gonna tape it up right up here into this existing harness, which should be far enough away and high enough not to contact anything. I'm just gonna wrap it up and throw a zip tie on there. There's my sensor with a zip tie in my wiring harness. This is gonna allow my compressor to now activate. So now you can do a repair and replace and rewire this outside temperature sensor on your BMW if this happens to you. This used to be a common thing I used to see. But a very simple repair, very easy fix, something that you can definitely do yourself. Thanks for watching. I hope this video was helpful. Please uh, select a like. Likes are much appreciated. And uh, let me know your comments. And if you have a specific BMW question, I might be able to help.